Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make these uh, pagoda stubbies. I really like the pagodas, the best video quality, but I break them at the, this is where I break them, at the uh, SMA joint. So uh, maybe I can make two of these today. One, no, I'll just make one. So if you're going to uh, take an existing pagoda and trim it, uh, once I get to the point where the uh, uh, wire is on there we'll show you the length and then you can trim it to that length so uh, first you're gonna need a jig don't use the wooden jig that comes with uh, the pagoda kits uh, in my opinion they will just make you really frustrated they don't work very well um, you can print a PLA jig this one's designed by Andy Shen it's on Thingiverse just search for pagoda jig and you'll see the one uh, on, on Thingiverse it's on, on the side uh, you just have to print it uh, this way and it prints fine uh, and it works great so you're gonna need a jig a TPU cover which I've designed but you can take the um, the one on farview f a r v e w dot com download it and add a uh, hex section if you want to make your own um, then you'll need the PCBs each antenna has three PCBs it's got the ground plane uh, the bottom plate the bottom PCB and the top one and you'll notice they have these lines, these little lines on the outside. That's very important. They need to be lined up. Uh, and when you put them in the jig, these words, you'll, this word will be on top. These words will be on bottom. That's very important. You don't want to do it like this or like this. It's got to be like this and like this. And, and then the ground plane, again, the words on the bottom. So, uh, And then the wire. Um, this is a, a RG402 wire. Do not use 316. Um, it'll be loose inside. This PCB is made for 402, so the 316 won't work. And then an SMA uh, connector, which comes with a pin that you need to put on the core. Uh, and again, SMA made for 402. They make SMAs for 316. That won't work either, so it's got to be RG402. Um, what else? So it's got the cover, the PCBs, uh, the SMAs, and the wire. Okay, so the wire uh, for this stubby, at least for my cover, it's best if it's about 26 to 28 millimeters. You can do 30. Now, obviously, the shorter it is, the less of the SMA you'll see at the bottom, and the longer it is, you'll see more of it at the bottom. Okay, so 26 is really, it hides pretty much the entire, almost the entire SMA, at least the hex part. Um, but it's hard to solder because very little shows between the bottom PCB and this and you'll see it uh, so I've cut one here this is about 28 um, and I'm going to trim the ends you want a couple millimeters showing off of one end just trim that off so there's a couple millimeters and three to four showing off the other end and if they're about the same it doesn't really matter so because it's just going to get soldered in and the solder will hold it pretty good. So that's slightly longer. So the short end is going to go to the top. I'm going to insert my PCBs. So the ground plane and then the bottom one. See those, these uh, lines again. And at this point, they don't have to be lined up. You want them kind of close, but not perfectly lined up just yet. I'm going to insert this. It should go through the bottom, through the bottom, uh, ground plane through the bottom plate, and then it'll stick out right at the top. Um, and it's okay if just gonna lightly rest that in there. And what I like to do is I take an old cut off zip tie and some flux paste, because flux paste makes this so much easier, even though it adds a little bit of messiness. I'm gonna add it to the top, and then I'm gonna add some. Oh, come on. Ooh, that's gooey. I'm going to add some right in between these two and just rub it on the uh, the outer casing of the SMA, uh, the uh, 402. Okay. <coughs> so that's in there. My soldering iron is all hot already. i got some solder. I'm going to first touch it to that center one on the top. Don't touch the center at the bottom. You can touch the outside of the 402, but if you touch the center at the bottom, it will get hot. So, just, I'm going to touch these PCBs, I'm going to push on the outside of the case, and it's going to be very quick. Done. Boom. That one's
one stuck. All right, and you want to make sure there's no gap in that middle one. So now I'm going to side of the bottom of the top PCB, and some of it will get to the bottom one too. That's okay. That's okay. So make sure you have a uh, tip that'll fit in there. I'm going to just grab that. The outside of these will get slightly warm, but not hot. So I'm going to solder now the bottom of that top PCB. And let it uh, once. So with that uh, flux paste, once it gets hot enough, the solder will just basically melt all around. Um, you can turn it over and get it later at the end, but you really, you really shouldn't have to. The flux will just get it. So I just saw it go all the way around. So now the top one is soldered. Okay, and the bottom one got slightly soldered. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom one. I'm gonna put a little bit of flux paste, uh, flux paste at the top and bottom where it touches the 402 wire. And now I'm gonna solder the top. And the flux will spread around, and it basically spreads around even to the bottom of the top one. That's okay. Now, now I'm going to do the bottom. Now, here's the part where while you're doing the bottom, it's going to get hot enough for you to twist with your hands. And while you twist it, you line up those two notches, the lines. So the bottom is getting some solder, and as soon as it starts to spread, it's loose. And I'm going to use my finger to twist this piece, bottom PCB push down and line up at the same time there they're lined up so it's parallel in the case because I was putting bottom pressure on it while I was soldering it and if you look at the lines they're lined up and the lines are on the top too so now all that's, that's left is this bottom PCB again I do use the flux I know I'm going heavy on the flux but it makes this really easy and it's all going to be glued inside the case, so you know if it's a little sticky or messy, it doesn't matter. You don't have to clean it with alcohol. I know what they say it degrades stuff, but by the time it's degrading anything, I would have destroyed it already. Anyway, the way this this stuff goes, you know how it goes. You destroy these things before they get a chance to degrade from flux. Trust me. The ground one doesn't matter. There's no notches to line up, so it just needs to be soldered. Is spreading to all around okay and that's good bottom one does get a little bit warmer okay parallel all lined up okay now you can take it out jig part is done um, this pin needs to go on here so I'm gonna do it off camera on my third hand I do put a little bit of flux so the way I do it is I put the pin in my third hand um, in the grips in the alligator clips put a little bit of flux right slide it in the pin slide it back out so now there's flux on both ends and I just dab a tiny bit of solder not near the tip otherwise it'll, it's gonna be hard to get in just just near the base okay and then off camera I'm going to insert the tip into the pin. Oh, it also helps if you cut it at a slight angle, that, that center core. And then I'm going to solder, solder that in. Sometimes it's difficult. So it's in there, um, but sometimes it gets a little bit stuck. And if it does, I take something metallic uh, like this jig, and I'll just find a flat spot, like a seam, and you get the push down on it, it's gotta be metal, push down on it, heat it up, and make sure it goes all the way in, and it is, so that's as far as it'll go, that's fine. Okay, there it is. So, without the pin, so if you're going to reuse one of these and cut it, without the pin, the outer casing is showing about eight millimeters. With the pin, I would say about 11 to 12, okay? 11 is probably fine. So if you cut this, measure 11 millimeters, and cut it, and then trim 3 millimeters for the pin, you will end up with this. So if you're using an existing pagoda, that's, I would use, uh, cut it off at 11. Okay, so we got the pin. 
and we just need the SMA and again it's gonna melt so I'm just gonna use this uh, stick it in here let's see yeah that'll work so a little bit of yet more flux around the outside nothing on the inside it's, it's okay though it's protected by a plastic uh, shielding so even if you get flux it's the solder's not gonna get on there okay I'm gonna put it in okay so there's the pin it's ready to go I'm just gonna do it like this and add my solder here and 28 so it looks like 28 is a bit long I, I was hoping that this gap right here between the SMA and the ground plane would be about three millimeters or so that looks like it's about five or six so that's gonna be a bit long so a 26 millimeter one would probably get you really close okay now this SMA gets really hot so what really helps is I find that putting it on even a pair of pliers or something something metallic just having that contact the heat will dissipate faster so I'm just gonna leave it in here and let that cool off um, and then I will do a second one for uh, with a 26 I pre-cut a 26 millimeter wire so we're gonna do another right hand one um, and I can do that off camera okay just went upstairs and got these covers and in that time about one minute the SMA is cooled off if you just let it sit it would take a little bit longer because uh, but the heat sink really helps okay here's the two covers uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in because if I do it's actually kind of difficult to remove so I'm using uh, this yellowish greenish for left hand now this is the best glue for this it doesn't affect the signal quality and you just need to get it you need to have the glue touch this edge this edge and then this edge but as you're sliding it in this edge will scrape everything so I'm only going to put glue on the inside of the cover to touch this edge and this edge and then we'll do the top one when the, after it's already in so the glue is going to go in all the way down here near the SMA connector I'm just going to kind of do a big circle here. Now you want to be careful. I don't need glue on the SMA connector. In fact, I would suggest avoiding it. If you ever need to take this apart, it's a, uh, you can cut the outer casing. But if you glue the SMA connector, that's just messy. Okay, so I've glued near the SMA, but not into it. Now I'm going to glue right at this outer edge here. And um, that will get that bottom PCB. So I'm going to just do a ring around here real quick okay and then we're gonna carefully slide this in carefully only because I don't want to get glue on the SMA so so if I had put enough glue for the bottom and top the bottom one just scrapes it all down anyway so there we go so I've glued this. I, I'm not quite done yet, but I just want to stop to show you. That's how much of the SMA is showing. Okay, so we're going to lay down a layer of glue right at the top at an angle so it touches the case and the top of the antenna. still be done and now let's do the second one we'll see uh, we'll compare how much of the SMA is showing okay that one's in yeah and this one this is the preferred length for me very little of the SMA is showing um, there you go this one um, so that's 26 millimeters and you can see this one's got a little bit more showing that's about 28 millimeters so 26 is the way to go at least for the cover I created Finish this up. 
Put my glue away. Two pagoda stubbies. And uh, video quality, as far as I can tell, um, with the regular ones that, that with the uh, you know an extended antenna like this, it's just as good. Uh, I've tested it, um, but hopefully it won't break because I always break it down here where it uh, solders to the SME. Guaranteed. I mean, I, I will fly with four antennas and I'll bring home with four. I have to repair. So love the video quality. Don't like fixing these. This should solve that problem. Thanks.